Today in the news, we got NVIDIA Resurrections. Intel GPUs and Intel CPUs. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with NVIDIA. The company is no stranger to refreshing or updating their GPUs. In this generation alone, for the seven different desktop GPUs available, from the 3060 to the 3090, we have 11 different models available. In previous generations, we even had five different versions of the same GPU. Sometimes they do this for a specific market, like how the 1060 had a five gigabyte version found in gaming cafes, and sometimes they do that to cut costs. Well, this time, it looks like Nvidia is updating one to help with the GPU shortage. As you might have heard from me in a recent episode, current supply to add inboard partners will be low for the RTX 3060, and they will stay low at least until the end of the month, meaning that these uh, cards probably won't reach the market until early to mid-October. Not only that, but with the speed at which these cards get sold out, yeah, getting one is not going to be easy. I mean, Best Buy sold out instantly. So what GPU is Nvidia rumored to revive to help with the shortage? Well, it's an oldie, but it's still a goodie. The RTX 2060. We heard rumors about that earlier this year in January, but nothing really came about in the following months. Now, the rumor is that a refreshed version of the card will pop up with a kind of different chip. The OG RTX 2060 featured a TU106-300 chip with six gigabytes of GDDR6. This new version would have a TU106-300 KX chip, but this time with double the memory at 12 gigs of GDDR6. Thankfully, with the current advances in memory for GDDR6, we could see a healthy memory speed bump from the old 14 gigabits per second on the OG card to something like 16 gigabits per second. As for the core itself, it's possible that the process has been refined to offer higher clock speeds, but this is all speculations on my part, so a big grain of salt. Honestly, the mere news of this kind of means that the uh, situation is definitely not going to get better for GPUs, which is a bummer. At least if it happens, it would be an extra GPU on the list for people who have been waiting for anything to be available. Next up with Intel, it looks like their DG2 GPU might be quite the beast. An alleged slide that came from Baidu shows how their upcoming Alchemist GPUs would perform against the blue team and the green team's current offerings. There will be two brackets of GPUs, what looks like a low power solution called the SOC2 at 75 watts, so no need for a six or eight pin connector, and one at 175 to 225 watts called SOC1. From the top end, of SOC1, the competition Intel is aiming at would be the RTX 3070 and the Radeon RX 6700 XT. Pretty high up. So just like I thought, Intel is not aiming for the top of this generation, but rather kind of the uh, top mid to middle. The lower end of this SOC1 would compete with the uh, 3060 and 3060 Ti for Nvidia and the 6600 XT for AMD. You can tell this slide was created before the 6600 XT was released, since, well, it's TBD. The SOC2, on the other hand, is 75 watts, and it would compete with a GTX 1660 Super. According to the slide, it would fall short from beating AMD's last generation RX 5600 XT. Obviously, we don't know how many models would be available, but given the price brackets on the left and the uh, number of GPUs from the competition, we could see three for SOC1, one, and maybe two GPUs for SOC2. Now, let's be real. This is just a slide and it could be fake, but it does align with what we've been hearing from sources around the web. Another thing I wonder is if this slide is designating the uh, price brackets or performance bracket. As we know, price and performance can uh, vary. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. And speaking of Intel leaks that might not pan out, it looks like Intel is looking to revamp their stock coolers for the CPU market. Intel has pretty much abandoned their stock coolers with the unlocked series of core CPUs, and it's understandable, they suck. So no coolers with the uh, 11600K and anything above that is unlocked. Well, for Alder Lake S, the 12th generation, Intel might bring some back. 
at least for their 65 watt TDP models. There's the RS1 for Celeron processor and another one that I can't make out, the RM1 for the Core i3s to i7s, and the RH1 for Core i9s. Unfortunately, you shouldn't expect these to be available with the higher end of Intel's K-series processors, the unlocked ones, since they're all rumored to float between 95 and 125 watts. Who knows, maybe it will be available with some i3s that might be unlocked. Plus, by the looks of these new thermal solutions, they look pretty weak. What's up, Intel? Are you afraid to, you know, insert a little copper pipe here and there like AMD? Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the catch-up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. Uh, as usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. My girlfriend's behind the scenes saying the exact same thing, so if you hear a double, that's why. Take care.